Eskom, Transnet and Sanrail are expected to spend approximately 500 billion rand on infrastructure development over the next few years. Investment manager Stanlib believes that about 20% will be allocated to the local construction industry. So joining us in the studio to give the analysis of which shares will benefit from that budget is Anashrin Pillay, Industrials Analyst at Stanlib. Hi Anashrin. If we could just kick off with these massive numbers that we keep hearing with the infrastructure spend. Uh, first of all, is all this money going to be available? These are hard economic times. Uh, the tax revenues are not going to be as good as they might be. The profits for these parastatals, uh, certainly Eskom looks better with its, uh, with its uh, electricity tariffs that have been up. Transnet can't count on that kind of guaranteed income. So that's the first question. And the second question is, Transnet, some double counting one suspects. You know, I'm not saying they're doing this deliberately, but every time they announce an, another procurement or another order for locomotives, it sounds like more and more money is being allocated, but it's not actually. It's the same amount that they announced a while ago. Okay, I think uh, if we can start with Eskom. I think Eskom has been quite good in, in obviously raising funding and actually rolling out their expenditure. And I'm sure you know, I mean, the two power stations they're building at the moment, Kusile and Madupi, they're actually the third and fourth largest power stations currently being built anywhere in the world. So they have been quite good at actually um, ex uh, getting the exp um, raising the funding and then obviously carrying out these projects. The skills are obviously the, the biggest concern, but they've been able to, obviously after not building for 20 years, been able to build up the skills base again and start rolling out these projects. I think Paul Oflati has done a great job. He's brought commercial sense to the, to the business. And obviously they want to stand, be able to commercially stand on their own footing and obviously uh, roll out these projects off their own balance sheet. The, I think the key thing for Eskom is obviously the, the, the price increases that they've been getting, and that's been helping, the, the, uh, helping them get the funding in. And on, on the Transnet side, I think the, the, the key number to look at is their last number, which I think is the most comprehensive plan that they put together. So it's a seven-year plan of 300 billion, mm. and they clearly indicated that about 30 to 40 percent of that is basically dedicated to locos and also wagons. So basically trying to get our railways going, to get the mining output uh, basically to the ports and obviously inc increasing our economic uh, growth. What about the capacity there too? And one of the problems with Transnet is that they've got their dedicated iron ore and coal lines. Yes. Their general freight business is carrying the volumes roughly that it was a decade ago, yes. although they've had a recent improvement. The revenue that they need in order to fund some of those uh, big spending items are uh, yes. very optimistic. They are, but they're based on very simple economics. So basically they've got in a uh, longer term GDP forecast of about three to three and a half percent, which are, it's, it's, it's optimistic, isn't it? It is. It, at the moment, it looks optimistic, but uh, I mean, at some stage, you would like to think that we could get there, uh, provided things start picking up. Obviously, interest rates coming down uh, might also give that a kickstart. And I mean, yes, they are optimistic, so they're expecting, I mean, a lot of coal to be pumped through. So, I mean, obviously, with the power station coming online, that's not really unre unrealistic if you think about it, d given that they're both coal fired p power stations. So, I mean, it, they, some of the targets are optimistic, but potentially they could get there. And I mean, they're, they're getting better. I think Brian Bolif has obviously mm. brought a level of professionality mm. to the business, mm. and he understands fully well the, the basically a standalone kind of parastatal, how important that is to us. Well, let's pause there for a moment yeah. and Chris's response to that. Yeah, my sense is that, uh, you know, from a macro perspective, there's a bit of a mismatch in the sense that we don't actually, even in the country, have sufficient savings to actually fund this without major disruptions and crowding out of other sectors. So to a large extent, uh, to what extent will the parastatals add construction business, for instance, in the, in the um, economy, and to what extent will that be taken away somewhere else? Mm. Yes. Um, and that, that, that is a critical instance. It's not additive. It's really um, a shift. I think the key things with, with the latest expenditure programs is a big drive to having local content and obviously improving employment and for example if you take Madupi, I mean basically the towns and the surrounding areas around that have benefited from, uh, from the economic spend, from the employment that you've had, from the economic spend that you've had and obviously that, that translates to a whole lot of things and obviously transpires into the economy. So the big thing for infrastructure spend which has been quite low for, uh, for a number of years now and quite uh, below the long term average since 1960 is that they need to spend the money basically to, to create employment because construction is basically a big employer. So that's one way. That's, that's not a easy permanent employer, but nevertheless that doesn't 
affect from an investment point of view uh, where the actual prospects are. Mm. But uh, yeah. what I'm trying to say is that you, you're shifting expenditure, not necessarily adding to spend expenditure uh, in the economy. So in other words, if it wasn't being spent on transit, it would be spent somewhere else yeah. and uh, would have an effect there. So this is not additional, is Chris's point, yeah. I think. Um, I mean, I, t I tend to disagree. I mean, if they are good, for example, if they bring in, a, if they need to build another power station, which we obviously need power on, then yeah. I think that would be, that would be additive. I mean, you are creating, you will be creating new yeah. jobs, you will be creating, um, Opportunities in the mining sector for coal, etc. Okay, one more point okay. before we get on to the the, the, the shares that will benefit yes. from all this spending. Yes. As the Transnet locomotives you mentioned, that's not the same as big construction jobs. I mean, that's highly skilled and relatively few jobs being created there. And I saw that Transnet had said they would be creating 550,000 jobs. And I'd be interested to know exactly how they calculated that. Uh, yeah, no, I think yeah, it's odd. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's a little bit optimistic. Uh, but direct and indirect, I would say. Yeah, I think it's probably a little bit indirect. But, I mean, given the locomotives that they do want some local content, I think uh, from GE and things like that, so they do want to obviously embed the skills here so we have it for future generations and to have a long-term sustainable program in building locomotives and things like that. Of course, I historically, Transnet and Eskom used to provide the skills for the rest of the economy. Apprenticeships, uh, thousands yes. of people used to go through. But let's move. I think we've, we, you know, it's a, it's a great yes. debate yes. on these big numbers and infrastructure and the effect. But you've taken a view on this and uh, there are particular shares that you think will benefit so take us through them yes i mean in the in the standard of industrial fund i mean we we try and give investors uh, uh, a kind of exposure to these kind of funds or so infrastructure type shares and i mean one of the ones that we look at is ppc which we have in the fund uh, i mean it's it's kind of a non-consensus call at the moment but it's it's an early cycle play pays good dividends, 5 to 6 percent dividend yield, there's no execution risk, and the margins are still at trough margins, they're still at about 24 percent. So quite high margins in, in, a, in, a, in quite a good business. I mean, and sure, they, I mean, GDP levels are quite low now, but cement volumes are intrinsically linked to GDP growth. So if the GDP starts picking up in the next two or three years, we will see a general pickup yeah. in volume. And historically, PPC has been a very good company, darling of the market in the mid 2000s. Mm. Yes. It was part of Barlow World uh, there for a yeah. while. And in their recent, uh, when they did their recent empowerment deal, they did say that uh, the outlook for cement sales they thought was good. So they themselves are talking it, Chris. No, I think so. I think uh, 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 cement sales are, are fairly, you know, go across the the economy quite broadly. It's not just mm. big uh, construction projects, it's also um, home improvements, home building, etc., of, of which there's a huge backlog in South yeah. Africa. And that, uh, you, you know, that's an ongoing thing. And with lower interest rates, you may well get a, a boost in the housing market as well, which is another um, a, a, another area where PPC Reminds will me benefit. a little bit of Sassel. We've talked about Sassel being a yeah. no-brainer for the long term, and maybe yes. PPC is one of those no-brainers for the long term. PPC is quite cyclical, so I wouldn't necessarily look at it in, as a full long-term play. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think would you'd certainly be putting PPC in the portfolio uh, what, from time to time. And what else, Anisha? Yeah, the other ones that we look at, uh, I mean, Avenge is one that's um, quite an interesting one. I mean, uh, currently 20% of its current market cap is in cash. Uh, it's got a wide portfolio, so it's a, it has a cross-section of... Uh, of industries that they're involved in. So they're involved in the steel industry, mining, construction, and obviously in Australia with McConnell Dow. So that has exposure to the mining sector there. Uh, so you get a bit of the currency benefit. And yeah, I mean, at the moment, its earnings are quite close to trough. I mean, this year is probably not going to be great. But I mean, if there is a pickup, I mean, it's a good way to play the sector as well. I recall mm -hmm. Avenge saying that they were relieved when Carl Grimm was the chief executive. They were relieved they never got involved in the car mm -hmm. train. Uh, yes. Because it's proved to be quite a complex thing for Murray and Roberts. Mm -hmm. Yes, also the, the other one that we have is Murray and Roberts. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a riskier play, but I mean, again, we, I mean, at Sandler, we take, our process is driven by a long term process, so we take a long term view on the shares. And in, in the case of Murray and Roberts, yes, they, they've, they've been dealt quite bad blows in terms of problem contracts that they have. So they're probably going to make a loss this year, but I mean, from next year onwards, they, they should start making a profit again. It's a turnaround story. I mean, they do have a concession in the cow train as well, which is quite interesting. So they have a 30% concession there. So, uh, yeah, so, and it also linked to the, to the mining cycle longer term. So it is a cyclical and They've had a rights issue, which the market has absorbed yeah. already. Yes. No, exactly. And I, th I think uh, it highlights the, the interesting 
place that your construction stocks are that they can actually they've got quite big beat in the sense that you can go from trough to peak in terms of share price it's an enormous range and it's so if you're playing that you yeah. know that but one would play these shares valuations at the moment then you've mentioned these three obviously two construction companies and a cement company your implication is that they're offering value now and you've got in there yeah we've I mean we've obviously have been holding for a for a long time and I mean, there is value at the moment. I mean, the share prices have come come off, and I mean, if you look at events trading close to book value, I mean, it's a good way to look at it. And uh, earnings is obviously quite difficult to forecast in the sector, so we look at other intrinsic factors to try and pick up uh, where there where there's potentially value. PPC again, good return on assets, high margins, uh, and close to trough. So again, another way, and obviously an entry into Africa now. I don't know if you saw the announcement today that they have taken a stake in an Ethiopian cement plant as well. So, I mean, gives an uh, investor mm -hmm. exposure to Africa as well. Yeah. Well, an interesting sector, eye-wateringly large numbers. The stakes are high, the investment is big, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, thanks to uh, Anashwin Pillay, that was uh, Anashwin from uh, Stanlib. He's the industrials analyst there.